up everybody? This is Barry at Titans of CNC. So today, our friends over at JE Motorsports gave us this clutch basket housing from the world's fastest four-wheeler. This thing's been clocked at over 112 miles per hour. And they want us to do a little bit of redesign work on this to try to cut out some weight and make it a two-piece design that allows them easier access to make adjustments to their clutch. So our first step is gonna to be to take this over to Travis and our CMM and have him pick up some locations for our critical features. All right, so here we are reverse engineering our part for the four-wheeler that Barry talked about earlier. Now, because we don't have a 3D scanner yet, we're using our Mitsutoya Krista Apex V to go ahead and grab the features that Barry's gonna need to model this part up in SolidWorks. Now, one thing that's unique about this part is right here, we have a one-piece design. We're gonna make it a two-piece design. Barry is gonna make the body. He's gonna go ahead and machine that. And the second piece is gonna be a screw-on cap right here that actually I'm gonna be machining over on the Puma 2600. So what do you do when you already hold the record for the world's fastest four-wheeler? Well, obviously, you try to go even faster. And today, that's what we're gonna try to do for JE Motorsports. Because we're tight on turret space, we're gonna go ahead and our inserted drill has a big square insert on the outside so I can step over. Now we've ran this just a little bit slower because we're running pretty much dry, but our depth of cut is still 125 thou. So pretty impressive inserted drill. Now normally if you turn a lot of aluminum, you'll have a pretty smoky enclosure in here, but I will say our mist collector by LNS keeps us nice and clean. We are gonna go ahead and we've roughed this part out as far as we can, but we do have a hub inside of there. So now we're gonna come in, we're gonna use some 2D dynamic milling, and we're gonna go ahead and cut around that hub. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use this same tool. I'm going to finish this floor here. I'm gonna leave material here. We're gonna finish that with a boring bar. I am going to, however, finish the OD on the hub right here. I'm gonna go ahead and rough the center and the top of this face. Now, we only turn down as far as we need to. When we flip this part around and grab it on second off, we'll go ahead and take off the rest of that material. All right, so the final thing we have to do is cut our upper thread here. This will go ahead and allow us to screw this part onto the part that Barry's machining. All right, that completes op one of our cap. We'll go ahead and flip this around and we'll do op two. I've already machined a set of jaws that we're gonna go ahead and put in to use for op two. We have some thin walls on this part right here and I'm only using three jaws. That is gonna have a tendency to push in on this part. So we are going to significantly reduce our jaw pressure to significantly reduce how much we warp this part. So now we're gonna go ahead and we have a hex on this part that we're roughing out now.
go ahead and finish up with a chamfer on that hex. All right, with that, our cap is done. All right, so that wraps up the machining for our part. I'm gonna go ahead and get this cap over to Barry so he can fit it to his part. We thank you guys again for joining us. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, check out our academy, and we'll see you guys next time.